Greetings. Welcome to the Everything Old School Podcast with Marquise Marrow, which is a toxic magazine. And I got one of the legends from Queens. And um, y'all all know about it. There's a movie that Nas made or a documentary that was made not too long ago about the Supreme Team in Queens. So I want you to introduce yourself, brother. My name is Waz McGriff, born and raised in South Jamaica, Queens. Yes, indeed. Now, I want tell tell the people what, what crew you was down with, man. What organization, rather? Allegedly, yeah. the Supreme Team. Oh, okay, I, I respect that, man. Now, tell me, what was what was the Supreme Team about, man? Because you was there. Your last name's McGriff. Your your uncle is Supreme McGriff, right? Yes. Right. So I, I need you. I need you to tell me, man. How did the Supreme Team start? Grassroots, because you was there. Um, grassroots. It started out as you know, people that was just trying to do something productive. You know, um, back in the seventies and the early eighties, we didn't have social media, so um, it wasn't it wasn't easy for anybody to try to find a job, especially a person of color. Mm -hmm. You live inside certain certain neighborhoods, environments. It doesn't matter what city or state. Cause every every state, like um, every city or state, they have a hood. So um, you got to adapt to whatever hood that you live in. You know, um, it was an organized unit, a bunch of five percenters that were just trying to earn a little bit of gold for their own labor. That that, that makes sense. So what what did y'all start? Did y'all start off selling weed or? You went straight um, started to that. Allegedly, um, it was supposed to have been weed and then it moved on to heroin. Mm. So so it was so what it what about crack? Y'all y'all never touched the crack too tough? Or that was after the heroin? Yeah, allegedly. that was yeah, like that was um that was after that didn't transpire until like 80, 86. Mm -hmm. 85, 86, and then the pandemic came a little bit later, but when the pandemic had hit real hard, I was already detained. I was incarcerated. Now, now what do you mean by pandemic? And what year? What what pandemic and what year? What do you mean? Um, I had left February of 1987, and I did not get released until February of 2003. I had served 16 years for killing two people. Um. The courts had found me guilty. I dealt with it. Mm -hmm. And came home. No, but the crack pandemic had hit hard after after when I was arrested. It didn't really, it didn't really like succumb to um, every borough in New York until 87, 88, 89. Mm -hmm. I was arrested. I was arrested February 87. So I wasn't really there for the height of it. I was there when it first. It was like first coming out because it was actually free based before it was crack. Mm. Now you said pandemic. Do you mean epidemic? No, you um, said it was yeah. Pandemic you... because because okay. the epidemic had caused the pandemic. You know, because mm. you know, because it's actually sad, you know, when mothers get addicted and they gotta sell a baby food to milk the pampers, they gotta sell a body, they gotta sell a soul that they're trying to do something. Fathers, boyfriends, husbands, the ones that was caught up, they wasn't able to provide because they was trying to take care of their own little habit. They wasn't worried about, you know, trying to feed their kids and their wife. They in the street doing whatever it was that they got to do so they could get the next one. Mm -hmm. So so you said you did 18 joints for two bodies? 16. 16. 16? So yeah. you, you kind of you got over then for 16 no, um, it was two bodies? Tell us about no, the um, body. It was, actually, it was actually it was actually a typographical error that the um that the court stenographer had made because the judge had sentenced me you know to concurrent sentences, but the stenographer had wrote down consecutive. So because of just that one simple word, and for anybody that ever catch a case, go to the law library and try to research research everything that you can. Don't worry about what your private lawyer, public defender. 18B, you got to do your own homework because like some people, they'll notice something, but they won't tell you. It was just that one word that I was able 
able to get my time reduced. The original sentence, you know, when they had told me consecutive, so it was like 25 for one body, 15 for another body, to the life of the paraphernalia that was allegedly there, running wild with a two to six for having on a bulletproof baseball hat and a bulletproof jacket. 25 and 15 is 40. You add another 10, that's 50. You add the two to six, that'd be 52 years of life. But because of the typo, they gave the lowest maximum, which was going to be 10 years of life for the um, project, the product that was allegedly there. A different amount of 10 years of life, I ended up doing 16. Mm, that's deep. Nope. So, 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 so tell, us, tell us about the reason why you went, if you, know, if you don't mind getting into detail. You know how that went. No, down. I mean, um, I'm About past it. You know, um, mm -hmm. you know, um, I was hustling. I had asked somebody to assist me and putting and putting some things together. The person that normally assists me said that it was too much for them and put me on. Like, I'm trying to put me on to somebody else. I told that person, I don't. I don't want to meet nobody else. If I'm dealing with you, then I deal with you. Go ahead and get it done, and I'll come back and see you later. Then when I came back to see the person later. The person who they was trying to put me on to, seeing that I was just a young kid, and was like, I'm not giving you back nothing in the conversation. Because if you let somebody take something from you right now, somebody going to take something from you every day when you come outside. And then if you are working with, for, or under somebody else, they don't want to hear that somebody took that. Right, right. Somebody How old had held you? you was, um, I, was, I was 19 at the time. Mm-hmm. I was getting ready to turn 20 that summer. Uh, and what about the second one? Um, the second oh, one never made it to court to testify. Oh, okay. Because you said you had two, so. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Because I, I had to go back for the second one because the second one was the one that I actually gave the stuff to. And they gave it to the first one. So since the mm. first one didn't want to give it back, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. So being that um, I had gave it directly to the second one, you know, you can't ask somebody to come to the courtroom. Right. And I can talk true. about it now because I served my time. So it isn't like they could try to lock me up for something different. You paid your dues. Exactly. And I didn't even know they had bulletproof vests. I mean, bulletproof hats. I didn't even know that existed. So y'all was before your time, huh? Yeah, but anybody that was getting some money, they could get it done. It just wasn't us. Anybody who was getting money, um, you could take a vest, you could take it uptown to Dapper Dan and Dan to stick that vest on the inside of, of a baseball jacket, of a Dapper Dan jacket. Mm, that's for sure, especially back then. So, you know what? You know what I want to ask you too, man, because of about your Uncle Supreme. You know, people don't know him, but they know about him, you know, in the resume. I want you to tell me, man, tell me how he is behind closed doors, like the person, your uncle. You know what I mean? Calculated, calculated. He lives his life. He lives his life like a chess game. He's always thinking. He always has something positive to say. He don't want to be caught up or rare, any type of negativity. But it was just the negative notoriety that, that had actually had made it bad for him. You know, because he was... He was away so many times and said that he wasn't physically there to be a part of anything. But because mm -hmm. the name was there and he was attached with the name, he was just guilty by association. Mm. I okay. mean, um, I've been knowing you like 15, 20 years. So that means that if I get caught up in something right now, People, people, they're going to run with it. Brother Marquise was just with him. I just seen Marquise. Marquise, Marquise, Marquise. And it's ain't nothing but an interview. Mm -hmm. That, that, that makes see, sense. But people, but now people, they want to be so quick just to label something because they just want something to talk about. Um, I understand. Now, now will he, will, is he ever getting out? Is, um... Uh, God will be waiting to see what's going to be the end results for his appeal. I would love for him to get out, but I really can't speak for the courts. Right. And, and how long he been there um, since his last arrest? How long he been there? November will make 21 years. 21 years. Wow. That's a long time, man. And I know he and I know Melly Mel told me Supreme say changed his life. 
He said, your uncle changed my life, man. Not you know, really. My uncle, my brother probably did because Mel had performed for my brother's birthday party back in the days. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like to this, to this very day, it's a private joke that like me and Melly Mel, we still laugh about because that's a real good friend of mine. Indeed. You know, Melly Mel raised me, raised me inside the industry along with Cash, the original DJ Hollywood, Busy right. B, God Bless the Dead, Love Bug, Curtis Blow. They raised me as a kid. So um, I will never... I will never omit the um the history of what them brothers had taught me. But with Mel, it's just a private joke. Right, right. Well, I you know what? Let me let me be more accurate. He said them dudes. He didn't say your your uncle specifically. So to be right. more accurate, he said y'all. So yeah, it was yeah, it was actually it, it was actually my brother. Mm-hmm. Prince saved them. So so Prince so saved them. So, so Prince, Prince is your blood brother. Yes. Oh, okay. Well, I was a child. So, tell, so tell us about um. Now, if, is everything on the table? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I don't have anything to hide. Um, oh, I don't okay. have a problem taking. I have no problem with taking accountability for anything that I have done. But I'm not going to throw somebody else under the bus. And I'm not going to try to make myself look bigger because I'm a part of or related to. You know, that's yeah. corny. That's what other people do. Mm-hmm. Like you got brothers. I'm like, oh, I'm like, you got brothers that be doing podcasts that wasn't even there for certain situations. But they want to try to monetize off. Uh, I I understand. Uh, I respect that, man. So, um, tell us, uh, tell us the originals, because I remember, I remember you said, I remember you told me, well, I got, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go back there, but you told me that if anyone can tell a story about the Supreme Team, it's Bimmy, because he was yeah. there from day one. Nah, nah, um, Bimmy was not there from day one. He came along after, but now Bimmy yeah. was there. He, he Bimmy was, was there. there, definitely. No, yeah. He was there. No if fans or butch. That's my kinfolk here and now. We still talk two, three uh-huh. times a week to this very day. And, and y'all was just kids, correct? Yeah. Basically. Yeah. I mean, like, it's just a year apart between me and Bim. You know, Bim just turned 57. I'm about to be 56 next week. Mm-hmm. Well, ha- you know, happy, just a year happy apart. Birthday. Oh, I didn't, I, even, I didn't even know Bimmy was that old. I thought he was younger. Nah. He looked younger to me. Yeah. Yeah, then when you living good and you eating right, look at you. Mm-hmm. Well, that's look at yourself, Marquise. But I ain't eating right. That's just a blessing. But I could dig it. So, so what's so what's the money, man? Tell me, tell me the dough y'all was bringing in a week or, or a day or you know, I me. Mean, what's that money looking like, man? Allegedly, anywhere between two hundred to three hundred thousand a week. And, and what was the stretch? Like for how what long? Like oh, um, for, how long? for years, three, four, five for years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for years until until when them people came, shut it down. Then they may shut you down for like a week or two, and mm-hmm. then you around um, a whole lot of people that know how to think. You ain't gonna be on the corner of Linux. You gonna go up the block the seventh. <laughs> mm-hmm. That that that's for sure. And I remember we had a discussion a while ago. You said y'all knew who the police was, and y'all used to wear the same yeah. colors. Yeah, explain right. that to me again. To the, it's to like the saying people. if it's yeah, um, it's like saying if it's me, you, and five or six other people, and we all come outside with the exact same outfit on. I'm talking about the same hat, t-shirt, pants, the same sneakers, uniform. Nobody can never. Exactly. Nobody can never say exactly, exactly who did what. Mm. D- just like the hit on on Paul Castellano, they was all dressed the same way. Exactly. So like nobody really don't know exactly, exactly who did what, except for the ones that was there. No, oh, that's deep, man. Y'all, y'all definitely calculate. And how did y'all know, uh, like? With the police, because did you say your aunt was a police or worked with the police or something? And one, I don't want to misquote yeah, like you. Uh, something and we like had that. we had family, we had relatives, and we had friends that worked at the precinct. You know, that gave us access to what the colors was back then. Because back then, the police they had certain colors that they will wear. 
you know, like um, orange might be the color of the day. So if you see somebody with orange, you know, that, you know that you ain't making no sale until like you don't see nobody with orange or green or whatever the color may have been for the day. You know, saying so um, we knew what the unmarked cars used to look like. Nowadays, the unmarked cars be Maseratis and Benzes. For sure, they jumping out of they jumping out of the eight. They jumping out of um, the AT and T van. They dressed up like Con Edison. They wasn't doing that back then. So, so when you say the orange, the police was dressed up. You talking about the undercovers? That's right. how you knew if they was the undercovers that they had on orange or something. Exactly. Exactly. Oh. Everybody so, knew what the uniform was, but like um, every borough had a color of the day. Oh, I didn't know that, man. So it is deep. So when when do you have any concerns about repercussions even today? No, nah, I don't. I did what I did. Life goes on. I'm not saying that I'm proud of whatever transpired because one of the victims, the guy, um, I was actually I was actually incarcerated with the guy's son. That's when the buzz was first coming out inside the early 90s. I'm not a part of nothing, never was. You know, and then I had a chance to meet the brother. You know, when I was away and he asked me what happened, I said, I really don't have nothing to tell, but you can read my transcript. Mm -hmm. You know, the paperwork, the paperwork says everything that transpired. It was like I just woke up and said, let me go outside and kill somebody. Oh, I, I understand that. So did, did you have did you have beef in, in jail or, or did they give nah. you respect because you was you you was you rock with the Supreme Team? Now, nah, like when you locked up, they don't really care about um who you are. You got to you got to be held accountable for the things that you do. You can't get locked up and say, "Yo, no, I'm, I'm down with Zulu." You might be the only one there that's down with Zulu. That don't mean Ooh. nothing. What can you do? The jail jail's the great equalizer, huh? Yeah, yeah. Um, I had the chance of meeting like a great guy, um, the original Pistol P, you know, the Spanish one. I heard of him. You know, he great guy. Down, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he has a great podcast that's called or it's called Dogs in the Yard. Um, mm -hmm. you know, um, I was on Rikers Island you know, when I had met P and another dude by the name of Hound Dog. And they had a thing that was called Rat Hunters. And then, um, and then when they separated, they had still remained as as the family, but they had separated. And then um Pete had branched off and had made his own thing that was called K-A-R, which has stood for Kill All Rats. You know, um, when you're around great people and you just be you, it's like saying anytime when Marquise come out, people know who Marquise is. You ain't got to come out, yo, man, you know, my name is this and I'm a part of this. Nah, how you doing? My name is Marquise. Let's leave it at that. I can dig it. So did, did any of y'all have beef with any rappers? Nah. Nah, I mean, like, um, we was the guys that the rappers used to look up to. Ooh, you know, yeah. beef started. Beef started in like the late nineties, two thousands, and that was when rap had actually became like commercialized. When it was a culture, everybody loved the culture. But then, but then once the executives they start throwing around a whole lot of money that the that the ones that cultivated this are not getting, that's when everything changed. Ooh. So let so let me ask you this, man. The, the, the Fifty Cent movie "Get Rich or Die Trying." That was nothing uh, but a movie, right? Right, but 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 was that based on um what, what was the what was the the the, the lead actor name that the the lead gangster? What were they? Oh, majestic, majestic. Yeah, was, was yeah. That, that was just a movie. That was just a movie. Fifty did not. Movie. No, no. You no, know, Fifty did not write that script. Somebody else wrote the script, but it just so happened that the movie kind of coincide, coincide, you know, with um, Boo Boo's life. You say, but he didn't write that movie. Great movie, you know. That's still like a hood classic. I'm mm -hmm. not going to discredit the movie, but um, the movie, the movie did not depict anything real. His mother was definitely was definitely getting to it. But it wasn't like the movie. His mother is nothing like the lady that saw in Canaan and Pat. Nah, uh-uh. So that you knew was not his mother. mother. You knew Fifty Cent's mother very personally? well, very well, very well. We called the Blackie. Her name was Sabrina. Sabrina was a beautiful person. The best way to describe is 
Um, she kind of looked like Florida Evans from Good Times. Sabrina uh -huh. had a little blowout with a tight taper. Uh -huh. You know, when you said when 50 um makes all these great TV shows, his mother got a perm and dresses. Sabrina never wore no motherfucking dress. Uh -huh. She came outside with some Lee's, some Levi's, a crispy pair, a crispy pair of sneakers, or even or even some boots. She wasn't throwing on no heels and no and no pearls and big earrings. Sabrina was one of the fellas. Yeah, because if I'm not mistaken, I remember you saying, you know, no, no disrespect to anyone that she was more man than than him or something like that. I don't want to miss. Yeah, like, um, that was one of my yeah, like that was one of my first interviews, and I said that Fifty will never be half the man that his mother was. You see, because if they had social media back then, his mother would not have been on social media. His mother wouldn't be on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook publicizing anything that she was doing. You see, because she had she had certain codes that she lived by. Mm, real gangster type. I could dig it. You see, so once they had made or once they had made social media, society changed. You know, because right. social media. Social media actually had made um modern day children slow because now when we was kids growing up, we had to go outside and play. You know, we played tag, Coco Livio, hide and seek. We played skelly, stickball, softball, basketball, football. We ain't come outside trying to learn some great, some great hand and eye coordination. That's all kids can do right now. They can text faster than the motherfucker. They know how to play a video game all day, but they can't even write a curse. Yep, that's true. So do you, do you if have... If you were to you turn know? off the internet, children would be fucked up right now without the internet. Ruined. Well, no, what? Commit suicide. No, like, oh. um, the internet is good because um, it had made like, um, it had made everything that the Jetsons, you know, had depicted back then it had brought it, it had brought it into like fruition now. You know, but if they didn't have the um, Wi-Fi and they didn't have the internet, kids would be fucked up if they had to go to the library to actually research something. Mm. We didn't have no computers. We had to go find that book. We had to go find that encyclopedia. You know, and we didn't have no we didn't have no computers and cell phones to do spell check. You had to pull out that dictionary and that and that um and that um the source to figure out exactly what it was that you were saying. You had to and learn had about to go, grammar. And you had to go I, to the library to get the thesaurus because they wasn't really in everybody's house. Exactly, because now back then everybody couldn't afford one. Barnes and Nobles wasn't everywhere. That's true. So do you have you to go to Woolworth? Can can you tell a story like back in the day? You remember with 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 fifties mom? Can you you know you remember any story you or experience you had with her? Sabrina, um, every time when she came around, she had a smile that would light up the room. She mm -hmm. was the party, you know, like her personality. If you didn't know her, she ain't talking to you. If you knew her, I'm like just to be around her was real cool. Mm -hmm. Did, was she down with y'all in the game or she was no, just down with no. y'all because she knew y'all? No, she was an independent contractor who was just cool with a whole lot of different people. So um, it's like saying she could get something from you and something from this one, this one, and this one. Uh -huh. You know, but at the end of the day, at the end of the day, her count wasn't always right. Mm. I hear you. I know what you said. You said 50s, 50s gripe is he felt that he felt that certain people could have saved her. Everybody can't be saved. Right, Look right. At that when it, because when it was the mighty Zulu, Bambada couldn't save everybody as much as he as much as much he would have liked to. The Zulu nation have helped a lot of people, fed mm -hmm. a few people and clothed them and put them in school, but you couldn't do that to everybody. That's true. And, you couldn't and do now that to everybody. Overseas too. Exactly. But but I, but I like I like your choice of words, independent contract and all that. So um, unfortunately, do you do you know the circumstances of what happened to her? Like I had said that um at the end of the day, like her count wasn't right. So I guess that um, I guess that you either had to pay 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 up in cash, or unfortunately she had to pay with her life. 
And it wasn't like how the movie was. It wasn't like the movie. Mm -hmm. The movie. I mean, movies are strictly entertainment, and I'll just leave it at that. I can dig it. So you remember Fifty when he was a kid? You see, you remember seeing yeah, him when he yeah, was a boy? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Like um, Fifty was a great kid growing up. Like, say, mm -hmm. anybody who was from Queens back then, we never called them Fifty. You said Fifty was a dude from Brooklyn. You said that the one that lived in Queens, his name was Boo Boo. Boo Boo. Okay, yeah. The original Fifty Cent was. Yeah, I, I know about him. Short dude. Yeah. Gun short strength, dude huh? with a real big gun. Short yeah, dude yeah. with a real big gun. Yeah, for sure. I can dig it, man. So what about the original fifty was a modern day Omar from the wire? Uh, <laughs> if you seen it. fifty coming, if you seen fifty coming, you know you in trouble. If you wasn't cool with it. So is it is is it true? I'm, I'm asking because you was there. Tell, can you tell us about when Ja Rule got his chain took? Is it true that your Uncle Supreme got it back for him? Yeah, um, I was actually locked up at that particular time. I came out a couple months after that, but I had heard mm -hmm. about the incident over the phone. You mm -hmm. know, Prem saved a lot of people. Prem got back a whole lot of people, jury. Not mm -hmm. just Ja. Anybody who was somebody... And if you came from New York, you had to get you had to get protection from somebody. You know, my uncle was just one of one of one of the few that was protecting people. You also had Chaz, you know, Chaz, Chaz Williams. He was like I'm Chaz. He was out there saving a lot of people. You had you had um you had Biggs, Biggs that was down with Dame Dash. And Biggs was saving a lot of people. Mm -hmm. It's just like you couldn't go nowhere. You couldn't go nowhere if you didn't have some type of umbrella. Mm -hmm. So that's, Look at that's your umbrella. Cool. It, Look at so, your umbrella. You got the Zulu Nation. You got an umbrella behind you. Just not you. Uh, I can dig it. So, so is it like now, back in the days? You know how people always say you got to check in. You got to check in if you come to my city. Nah. So nah. it's not the same thing you talking. Nah, I mean, like that's what they do now. Uh -huh. you know, like um, me and myself, I don't never go to no city, no state. I don't check in with nobody. If I'm there, I'm there. If I see you, I see you. You know, I'm not checking in because I'm not asking for help. You got to check in. You got to check in at like different places, different places when you can't hold your own. Mm. Correct. Correct. Ask yourself. Ask yourself. How many times do or how many times do Marquise got to check in? Or do you just go somewhere, rock out, do your show, and leave? I'm going with when I please and how I please and who I please. There you go. There you go. Now, now some people just not built that way, so they ain't got no choice but to be like, I might get in trouble, so I'm going to call you for help. Mm -hmm. I'm not checking in with nobody. I check in with friends and family. I don't even let people know, like, yo, um, I'm going to be inside your city next week. Nah, because I'm not coming for that. I ain't got to check in with nobody. If I see you, I see you. If I don't, yeah, I was there. Why is intelligent? So you know, you know what, man? We we talked about we talked about those days, them 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 real gangster days. What you do? What you been doing since you got out? You know, and that, that everything that, that, possible that's not to go back in. Everything possible not to go back in. I've been using my personal experiences, my strengths, my hopes to try to deter younger people from making the same mistakes I did. I'm not going to tell nobody not to do anything. Do what you got to do. But just remember, life is about choices as well as consequences. It's going to always be some type of some type of reaction for whatever action that you choose. You know, um, if you out there committing crime, expect yourself to end up in jail or evil or like, um, like all depends like now what level you want. Death might be inside the picture. You know what I'm saying? So whatever money that you're trying to get, make sure that you save your money because you're going to need a lawyer. You're going to need bail money. You're going to need money for commissary. Mm -hmm. Like um, you want to stash something for whenever you get out because everybody going to sell you a dream. I got you. I got you. Yeah, I got you. They ain't got you. They're waiting for you to leave so they can pull up on your girl and they can take over your block. And that's definitely the truth, man. So what was what was what was the downfall of the Supreme Team, man? 
if you can pinpoint a time or an action, you know, what, what was the, the downfall, downfall? The beginning of the end. The, down, the beginning of the end was when, um, the beginning of the end was when somebody, somebody parole officer died. And then the downfall was a couple years that. later. You say that the downfall a couple years later was when somebody had a cop killed. And when the cop killed, that was just bad for New York, period. Not just the team, not Queens, but it was bad for every borough inside the city of New York. I you remember killed the cop. cop. No, but I ain't going to go so there. So do I. Yeah, me yeah. neither. I ain't going to go there, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that, so that was that was the downfall. Huh? That makes sense, though. That makes sense. So was you was you cool with Fat Cat and 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 Pappy Mason in them? You knew them because I know y'all yeah. from Queens. Y'all was tight. Yeah, um, yeah, um, yeah. Um, Cat was like the big brother, the big brother slash slash father figure to me growing up. You know, mm -hmm. I didn't never work for Cat. I wasn't down with Cat. You said Cat treated me like a son. To this day, he and I got a great relationship. I'm in contact with him. I'm in contact with his kids, his nieces. I still speak to his ex-wife. You're saying Cat raised me, so I have nothing bad to say about that man. I'm forever grateful for the values that he tried to instill in me. I hate it. Did him, did him and Supreme, your uncle Supreme, ever have a friendly competition? Or no. <laughs> This was his era, this was mine, and we all get money. Did they ever, you know? No, not at all. Not at all, because um, because um, Cat was doing that started frame out. Oh, see? That, that's why we're doing this interview. I don't I don't know. We it don't know. Like people, it's like saying, it's like saying, like, anybody who come from uptown, the only thing that they know to talk about is AZ, Rich, Rich and Poe. You mm -hmm. got to talk about Guy. You got to talk about, like, the older cast that was there, Bumpy Johnson. God, like, I mean, you got to talk about, yeah, like, mm -hmm. I mean, you got to talk about guy. You got to talk about Pee Wee Kirkland, you said, before the basketball came. Right, you right. You just can't say, well, Alpo did this and Rich did, man, listen, what about Fritz? Mm, I heard of Fritz, yeah. So, 116, so that, 116, it was a nobody touching it like Fritz. Nobody. So, Cap put your Uncle Supreme on. I, did, I yeah. didn't know that either. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because like now, um, Cat was the dude that you wanted to see. If you mm -hmm. came from that particular neighborhood, that's who you was down with. Mm -hmm. And so now, Cat got put on by somebody else. He got put on by a brother by the name of Ronnie Bump. Then he was mentored you know, by the Fatato brothers. Oh, yeah, the Fatato. I, I don't know about them, man. Tell, tell me about the Fatato brothers a little bit. Is that before some, your uncle or in the Supreme team or about the same time? It's around the same time, but a little bit before, because they was millionaires from weed long oh. before anything else came. Mm. You know, and um, mm. I really like the transition that the brothers have um, evolved from. I actually call them my mentors because they was able to groom me to becoming a better man upon my release. You know, me and Lance came home. At around the same time that we physically met up, and Lance was like, "Yo, this ain't this ain't how it was. Change your way of thinking. You know, you don't want to hang around the same old people with the same old conversation because all you're gonna get is the same results." You know, Todd was like, "Um, Todd was like, you gotta find you gotta find a sense of spirituality. It don't matter if you're looking for law, Jesus, Jehovah. You're saying to find your faith in God." Or like find your faith inside of a higher power. And as long as you follow the righteous path, you can never be led astray. I, I can dig it, man. So, so um, you know, that's that's interesting, man. Just so many things going through my head right now. You know what I mean? Because this is history right here, man. You you the supreme team, man. You there. It ain't no, it ain't it ain't no he say, she say. You was there. No, nah. nah, but like I always like I always tell anybody, I'm not here to glamorize anything that I've witnessed, anything that I was a part of. I always try to, I always try to like, you know, beat myself up for actually not being, not being as wise as my name is. You know, because I had chose to make a whole lot of poor decisions. I chose to make a lot of poor choices. So the end result, I had to go to jail. If I would have changed my own way of thinking, then I wouldn't have did that. But look it's at you. 
Yeah, but um, um, everybody got to go through go through some type of test in life in order for them to have their own testimony. Mm-hmm. I just choose not to always talk about my testimony. Whatever happened, happened. Been there, done that, got a t-shirt. We, we ain't about to go back in time. Cause this ain't 80 nothing. We in 2023. In the year, cool. in the year 19, in the year 1984, Prince predicted what was going to happen in 1999. We didn't think that we was going to be around around for 1999, 2000. Look at us now, 2023. God is good. So tell us what you do with Def Jam, man. Because you know, you see, one thing I know about you, man, is you you very humble. You you you're very um approachable. You know what I mean? And yeah, you don't. Sometimes. Oh, okay. Well, I know you always approachable. I'm sure everybody has their moments, and you don't you don't wear your reputation on your sleeve. No. But let, let us let us know. Let the people know about what you do with Def Jam, man. Because you you didn't even mention it. You know, so I'm gonna mention it. Because when I say what you're doing now, you didn't even mention Def Jam. So I'm gonna bring it up. Let the people know what you affiliated with Russell Simmons and Def Jam. Um, Russell actually took me took me out of the street. It was Bimmy who got me the job at Def Jam. I never was a part of Def Jam until when until when Bimmy put me on. So I always got to get that man his flowers. It's saying Russell gave me better options. You know, there was no Def Jam. It was actually Rush. I said Rush Promotions. Russell was a party promoter. He was managing Curtis Blow, DJ Hollywood back then. Love Buck Starsky, and he was just promoting parties. And then when the label took off, it wasn't no money involved. We was getting like $50 a week, if that. He said, just for us to jump on buses and trains and go around borough to borough to hang up to hang up flyers. And flyers back then, you had to go to the library and you had to use the Xerox machine. And we had to go from borough to borough and plaster the trains and the buses and downtown Brooklyn and uptown on 125th and 45th, 55th, the Grand Concourse to let people know that Love Bug is going to be somewhere performing. Busy B going to be somewhere performing. Curtis Blow going to be somewhere performing. And how long ago was that? Like when you first got out or? No, um, I was with Russell in 1983. Def Jam didn't form until the year um 1984. The first Def Jam, the first Def Jam artist was actually was actually T. La Rock. T. La Rock is the brother that had made that hit single. It's, it's yours. yours. T- exactly. You're saying T. La Rock was the first Def Jam artist artist with a solo deal. LL was the first artist to have his own album. Now, isn't and then is when it, I no, you go ahead, you go ahead. Okay. Isn't Allison Williams the first woman of Def Jam? Wasn't she the first one signed to Def Jam? Allison Williams, you know, just call. Yeah, um, my she was. Name. Yeah, it's like she was the first. She was the first female, female R and B singer. Oh, okay, okay. Like she came on right after Orange Juice Jones, but yeah, um, Allison was the first female that was signed. After Allison, you had you had a bunch of female rappers, but you ain't having no other singers. Nikki D was on Def Jam. So, so let me ask you this, because this is what I heard. Is it true that Jazzy J owned Def Jam first? No, no. Um, the original Jazzy J. Jazzy J is responsible for the Def Jam logo. No, because it was it was Jazzy J's idea to put the turntable attached mm. to the name Def Jam. Jazzy J was the first DJ DJ that Russell had. Oh, okay. See, I heard different, and, and that's why I'm asking. You know what I mean? That's right. why we do this. Jazzy J was the first DJ. Andre Harrell was one of the first interns. Long before Andre thought about thought about Uptown Records, Russell was managing Jekyll and Hyde because Andre was a rapper. Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. Midnight, well, a.m., p.m., all night long. Exactly. You know, Jazzy J was the first um person that can actually take credit for the creation of the Def Jam logo. Jazzy J was the first DJ that Russell that Russell was actually working with outside of DJ Hollywood and Love Bug, but it was but it was Jazzy. And then when Russell did the Def Comedy Jam, instead of going back to get Jazzy, he wouldn't have got Kid Capri. Oh, 
maybe because Kip Capri was hotter at that moment. I mean, you can't speak for him, but yeah, at all. Okay, so we'll leave that alone. so just a few more minutes. Wise intelligent. So Nas did a documentary or movie about the Supreme Team or series. Yeah, um, yeah, um, he had did. I believe it was a four part or a five part series that is still on Showtime for those that got Showtime on demand or on a fire stick or whatever. And what is it called? Supreme Team. Yeah. Now, is is any of those actors are you put playing you rather directly or no, indirectly? Um, no, um, nobody was in there acting. Anybody that spoke, they was themselves. Oh, because yeah. I didn't see it. That's why I asked. I didn't even see yeah, like, it. I mean, like, yeah, I mean, like most of the documentary, you can actually you can actually hear my uncle's voice. You can actually hear my brother's voice. And then you can actually see some of the people that was there back then. It wasn't it wasn't designed to talk about anything negative. It was designed to try to make amends for certain things you know, to try to that. take accountability. You know, to try to take accountability, like, yo, um, if I didn't do this, if I would have slowed down and doing that, it wasn't about trying to like now remake anything or try to relive something negative. So it's still on Showtime and produced by Nas. Did you speak on it? Did, were you in it? No, I did not. No, I did oh. not. I already got a lane for myself. You know, like my uncle was trying to create lanes of some of the other brothers that had came home and they didn't come home to too much of anything. You know, he always try to create an opportunity, you know, for other people. You know how, like, you try to create create them opportunities you know, to, like, this very day for like, that young kids. Because young kids don't have nowhere to go. So from time to time, you try to get a center for them to come to and you speak to them. You may put up, put up like, a platform, a platform for the youth. That was all that, like, my uncle was trying to do. He was trying to create a platform you know, for the brothers that um, never had a chance to speak for themselves. Everybody know what I did. My life is on Google. Google me. Everything is there. The good, the bad, the ugly. Then you got you got other brothers that got successful podcasts. You know, like um the guy from Brooklyn, Glaze, you know, saying that um that has a story to tell about everybody else instead of sticking to his own story. You cool with him though, right? Y'all know each other? Yeah. Glaze, we know each other. Yeah. I did a I did a few interviews with Glaze, and then when I gave a I gave an honorable mention to some real good guys, you know, when I shouted out Peter Shu, Calvin Klein, Bush, you know, my man Luke, and some other people. These are people that hate him. Oh, that not, ain't got nothing not, to do with me. Not, not Peter Shu, the party promoter, the the other Peter Shu. Just so to make it clear. Peter Shu was one of the original party promoters, the light skinned brother. I'm not talking about Dave Shu. Dave Shu, that's my man. Oh, oh okay. Peter Shu. Peter Shu, I right. apologize. Dave yeah. Shu, right, right. Dave that's, that's Shu and Peter Shu are two different people. The names are not even spelled the same. Dave mm -hmm. Shu is a great guy that puts on some great parties, grown and sexy. Peter Shu is actually responsible, responsible for the discovery of no Madonna. Madonna wouldn't have been would have been Madonna if she was a performer for Peter at the Latin Quarters and a few other clubs. Bro, see, this this is history. I ain't know that. I and speak to I, I speak to I speak to Peter Shoot weekly. That's the big homie. That's big bro. So you said Brian Blaze. You said you shouted that. Did he have a problem with him? Did Brian Blaze yeah. have a problem with you shouting them people out? Yeah. Yeah, and then, like on any type of interview that like he and I had um ever done, he actually had removed it. Not that I really care, because I don't need an interview to make me who I am. Mm -hmm. you no, know, but Brian I Blaze feel did. that if you got you no, know, but I feel that um if you have a platform and um you are making money from off your platform, I'm proud of you. But if you're making money from talking about other people, you should compensate them people. That's I'm fair. not going to get on the platform and be like, and be like now Marquise did this. And when Marquise was with the crash crew, they did this. Marquise, Marquise, Marquise. And I'm getting all these likes and these subscriptions and people put a dollar here, two and three dollars there. And I'm getting a couple dollars every month. I'm supposed to break bread with Marquise because I'm talking about you all day. I, I agree. 
That's, That's the purpose of me never doing no interview talking about nobody else. I'm held accountable for me. You see, cause when I die, ain't nobody going inside the casket with me but me. Ain't nobody going to be on that tombstone but me. So, you know, I'm, I don't need to be on be on any type of interview or podcast. And I want to big myself up. I did this. And I, man, no, I didn't. I did. Yeah, I know you're humble, man. I know you're humble. And that, that's real talk. So I'm I'm not going to keep you up, man. I know you, you got a newborn. I know, you know. No, I'm and, not yet home. I still got, I still got another, another seven weeks before the baby come. Wait a minute. I just told you that she was seven months when you, I, when you I, asked I, earlier. No, no but I, I was confused. I, I thought that you had the baby already. No, uh -uh, the baby is due, is due next month, September. Oh, okay. That's okay. My apologies. That's why I got mixed up. Well, con congratulations, man. Thank congratulations you. Congratulations to you, and and I and I hope you have a healthy child, and I hope the so mother. I. I hope the mother has a healthy childbirth, and you know, I, and I pray for it. And um, I want to thank you for taking the time out all the time, because you you always there for me. So when you coming to New York next week for which event? Because there's so many events. Yeah, like quite a few. Everything is the everything is the hip, everything is like revolving around the hip hop 50th anniversary. You and I, we could talk about that after the interview. Right, right. So call me, man, because when we do this interview, we have gifts. So I gotta watch for you. Okay. All right. So call me. You got the wicked watch, and I want to thank you very much for being a part of the Everything Old School podcast. But before you leave, I gotta ask. We I got something I call ten for ten. But most okay. people need most people need twenty seconds. But if you take twenty, fine. I'm gonna call it ten for ten. So you ready? Okay. I'm summer ready. Summer winter. What you like better, summer or winter? Summer. Fruits and vegetables. Fruits. Old school hip hop or old school R and B? Both. Oh, okay. Do you want to have a son or or, or a daughter? I already know what I'm having. A son. I just oh, want a healthy baby. Okay, so is he going to be junior? Yes. Oh, oh okay. Prince, his name shall be Prince Waz McGriff. Mm, I can dig that. Um, what, what's your favorite decade? 70s and 80s. 70s and 80s? Okay. Do you prefer in front of the camera or behind the scenes? Behind the scenes. The people that want to be when it be seen all the time, they front. They ain't doing nothing. I can dig it. Life is meant to be lived. Uh, I, I can dig it. Would you rather be loved or respected? Both. I would rather the respect more than love because a lot of people say that they love you, but they fake it. Mm, I, I, I can dig it. New New York or or North Car or South Carolina? Where you at now? New York all day. R rep all day. And I'm and I'm New gonna York ask all day. I'm gonna ask a stupid question, but don't smack me through the phone. Your favorite borough? Queens. Okay, I already knew that. That's okay. So that's the ten for after ten. Queens, after Queens, Harlem. Harlem. After Harlem, 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 the Bronx. Hmm. I could dig that. So I want to thank you again, man, for being a part of the Everything Old School podcast. Once again, this is my man Wise McGriff. I call him Wise Intelligent. You know what I mean? You always showed me love. And always will. Toxin Magazine is the one who backs this up. And we're going to do this. And thank you, man. And I will Not speak a problem. To you thank you for having me. Man, thank you for taking the time out, man. All right. So, till the next time, time love. Would they say love, peace, and hair grease? There you go. Love is love. All right. I'll see you soon, sir. All right. Respect. Peace.